morning. This is Pastor Kent here at Luray Baptist Church. I am so happy that you have joined us for worship this morning. Theodore Roosevelt once said, far better is it to dare mighty things, to win glorious triumphs, even though checkered by failure, than to take rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy nor suffer much because they live in the gray twilight that knows not victory nor defeat. As we worship today, let us consider how we might pull out of that gray twilight and enter into challenges that we might be victorious through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Psalms 119. Psalms 119 is what we call an acrostic poem because it's divided into 22 different sections based on a letter from the Hebrew alphabet. The letter Nun is the beginning of this particular section we're going to be reading this morning, beginning with verse 105 of Psalms 119. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statues are my heritage forever. They are the joy from my heart. 
My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. These are the words of Holy Scripture. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Christine. Today's message is the second in a series of sermons from chapters 7 and 8 of Paul's epistle to the Romans. Last week, we discussed the trouble that Paul had with his struggles with sin and overcoming sin. 
Today we're going to see how we are empowered by the God's Spirit to help us overcome these things. And then next week we'll look at the future glory that awaits us as overcomers of, of sin and destruction and death. Today's scripture lesson is from the 8th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Join me in the reading and the hearing of God's word. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. These are the words of Holy Scripture. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Christine. If I had only. Have you ever had any of those experiences in life? Any. If I had only experiences. One in particular comes to mind when I think of if I had only. It was the year 2000. Janet and I were sitting watching a TV program called um, CNET. It was about computers and technologies. It had one little bleep in it about a startup company that was working towards finding a means by which to, to search the World Wide Web, the search engine that um, was going to search everything on the web. And so that anyone that wanted to could easily just type in um, a request and those things could be searched. And I looked at Janet that day and I said, Jan, honey, you know, that sounds pretty good. You know, we need to invest in that company. Well, we didn't. That moment passed. If I had only... That company was Google. If I had only put some money into stock that at that moment, I would never be worried about money again. If I had only. I had some other experiences in life um, that were if I had only experiences. You know, when I grew up, the space race was was in full swing and the heroes in the United States at that time were astronauts and from an early age I wanted to be an astronaut and my studies my goals my dreams were to one day be an astronaut I majored in biology minored in chemistry in college hoping that I might be a mission specialist for a NASA project and I had uh, uh, sought out and began the process of hopefully going to the Air Force and becoming a pilot in the Air Force. I was on my way to, to um, after my graduation from Western Carolina, I was on my way to go to officer's training school. But in my last year at Western, I was playing intramural sports and I tore the anterior cruciate ligament in my left knee. And that dream, I didn't know it at the time, but that dream from that moment on was gone. If I had only. Years later, when I was home sick, uh, well, I wasn't homesick. I guess I was having surgery. I was re recovering from surgery. I was recovering from surgery. I was home um, at, at my mom's house in in High Point. I had a job then at the time in Winston-Salem at the Bowman Gray School of Medicine. And that day, on the 28th of January, in... Um, in uh, the year 1986, something terrible happened. The Space Shuttle Challenger exploded. And you probably remember that day as well as I do. Uh, the mourning, the tragedy, the loss of those crew members. I remember Ronald Reagan um, getting on television and talking about how those astronauts um, came close to God and touched his face. It was a it was a reminder to me that day that sometimes our decisions have consequences. If I had only years later 2003 again 
a shuttle was coming back to Earth, the Columbia. It was February the 1st, 2003. And their spacecraft disintegrated as it came back into the atmosphere. All were lost. When I looked at the names of those and the ages of those individuals who perished that day, they were all about my age. Had I achieved my dream of becoming an astronaut or a mission specialist on a shuttle trip, it could have been me that day who perished. If I had only. The Apostle Paul probably had many if I had only experiences. He was about the age of Jesus. He grew up in Galilee. There could have been the possibility that he could have known Jesus and walked with Jesus during our Lord's earthly ministry, but he didn't. He probably had, if I had only, moments when he persecuted the church, if he had only known the truth of who Jesus was. Things might have been different in his ministry. How the apostles received him would might have been much different had he known the Lord. In this passage of scripture, it's difficult for us to understand exactly where Paul is coming from because he doesn't give specific things about his past and his life that we can really lock onto. But generally we understand that he had his he had his regrets. He he wished things might have been different for him. In this particular passage, though, he uses a couple of words frequently. And one of the words that he uses is um, the Greek word uh, sarx, which in many translations is translated as flesh. In the passage that I have read from in the NIV is translated as human nature, the human nature that we have. Now, it can be translated sometimes, and Paul does, as, as flesh, as r real flesh, like on the bone. But other times, he kind of gives us its, its own meaning, this word for flesh, when he's talking about the, the human condition, um, the sinfulness of, of humanity. And that's how he's using it here. Another word that he uses frequently in this particular passage, and it's this particular word is used over 20 times in this, this chapter, uh, is pneuma, or spirit. I'll say it could be translated as wind. And it's, it's, um, its understanding is, 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 is power. This pneuma, the spirit, is, is the power of God. It's, it's also it's like a mighty rushing wind uh, that the spirit is moving. So Paul here is saying that there was a time in his life and in your life and in my life when um, we were at the mercy of our own sinful nature. And we have regrets about that. If I had only done this. If I had only avoided that. But Paul is the first to admit that these things um, troubled him and limited him. But now that he is in Christ he has moved into a different direction. He has been moved by the Spirit of God. And he is now in the, the power of God. When he put on Christ, he says elsewhere, that there, that there came upon him this mighty power of God that helped him overcome those things that weighed him down, that helped him uh, have find victory in those things that had once uh, persecuted him. He was, he was empowered 
by God, and now he had a, a victorious life. He was living victoriously in, in his life. Years, years ago, former President Abraham Lincoln was, was walking down a, a, a road to a, a small town. Now, this was before he was president. And he was walking down that road, and it was he was still a long ways from it. And suddenly he was overcome by a man with a wagon. And so he waves him down. He says, sir, sir, do you mind doing me a favor? And the man stops and says, sure, what do you need? He says, do you mind taking my top coat in to the town for me? And the man says, well, of course I will. But how will you find it uh, when it's there? He says, well, I, Abraham Lincoln says, I, I, I don't ever intend to leave it. I'm going to be in the coat. Putting Lincoln's humor aside, we, we see a, a, a parallel in our lives. And, and those of, of us who have put on Christ, that when we have put on Christ, we are empowered. We are empowered uh, to, to walk with God, to talk with God, to be with God, to portray God to the world. And others, people, when they look at us, we present to them our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a lot about salvation. If we are with Christ, we're going to be taken in his power. It's not all about what we are able to do. It's about what God has already done through Jesus Christ. And we are, in many ways, are along the ride for the journey. The Lord saves us. Like Abraham uh, Lincoln was taken into town with his top coat. We, clothed with Christ, are taken to the fullness of the completion of our salvation by, by God because we have his power. We have his uh, abilities. We have his strength. Now, when we don't put on Christ, we could be left by the side of the road. But if we put on Christ, our lives have fullness and dimension and power and abilities uh, like we know no other. Paul says that, that you, you and I, Christians, are, are controlled not by the sinful nature. Not, not by socks, but by the spirit, by the pneuma, the wind, the power of God. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. You want to have the power and the spirit of Christ. You want to be fully clothed with his glory and his power. Because otherwise... You're apart from God. But, he says, this is good news for us. If Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. All of our bodies are going to perish. Until Jesus comes back, Every one of us will taste death. death. Well, there's a difference. Some will taste death for eternity. Others who have put on Christ, a, a short moment of death and an instant resurrection of eternity. He says that your spirit is alive because of righteousness and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life 
to your mortal bodies through his spirit that lives in you. Now, you may ask, Pastor Kent, how, how do I know that his spirit lives in me? How can I know that for sure? How can I have the, 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 the peace and the security and, and understanding that I have put on Christ and my life is different and I'm not walking according to the flesh or according to the human nature, but instead I'm walking in the spirit. Well, it's easy. Understand this. That when you're, when you're walking in the spirit, when you've put on Christ, you're not thinking about yourself. In every situation, whether it's a personal, professional, whether it's with loved ones, strangers, enemies you are portraying Christ to that person that's it you've put on Christ and everything that you do and you say and you think and how you react you you're displaying you're modeling Christ to that person now I know that's not easy We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But just as Adam fell, just as he did not complete the work of God, another human being, Christ Jesus, was sent into this world. Flesh. But lived a life of obedience to God without sinning and because he was able to do that we have a model on how to live our lives oh there's going to be some times that we we fall short but on the whole when people look at us they should see a reflection of his glory have we all gotten there no Paul says we've been justified by our faith, but we are in the process, he says elsewhere, of being sanctified, turned into saints. Ultimately, we'll be glorified in the presence of God, with Christ by our side, receiving all his, his, his glory being in his presence and knowing peace like we've never known it before. Now, in these days of turmoil, of uprisings, of disease, of uncertainty, when you've lost jobs, many are, are, are hungry and hurting and uncertain about the future, know this. You're not alone. God's in the midst of all this. God is at working during all this time. We may not see it right in the moment, but when we look back, we'll see how it was God who has been sustaining us and helping us. Do you want to put on Christ? Do you want to accept him as your Lord and Savior? Pray this prayer with me. Oh Lord, I'm a sinner. I've fallen short of the glory of God. But Lord, I have put my hope and my trust and my faith in you. And I'm taking off the clothes of bitterness and anger. I'm taking off the garments of resentment and fear. I'm taking off those things that limit me 
from walking with you and being in your radiance. Lord, please forgive me of my sin. Come upon me, clothe me with your garments of righteousness and peace and justice and mercy that I might walk with you and shine through your radiance so that others can know you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today, you believe it in your heart, you've been saved. If you ever need to talk to someone about it and complete the journey, you know, this is just a start. If you prayed that prayer and never prayed it before, I'd love to talk to you. Please call us here at Luray Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Kent. Give me a call. God bless you. May keep you in the days ahead. Put on his garments and shine like never before. Yeah.